condolences on behalf of the African National Congress. Um, we will, the family will be going to Limpopo, as you all know, that uh, the funeral uh, will be on Saturday. And uh, it has been declared, uh, I think, a state funeral, I don't know which category, uh, by the president in Zanin, in Limpopo. We are discussing with the family our plans as the ANC uh, to have a memorial service uh, to celebrate the life of uh, Comrade Tito. And uh, that uh, we intend to do it uh, maybe after the, the funeral. Uh, so that uh, we get the right speakers and uh, also proper planning uh, for the memorial service. Comrade Tito departed the world of the living at a time when both his country and his movement needed him most. Both needed him because despite the temptations which have captured some among us, he remained the true revolutionary cadre formed during the years of struggle to defeat the apartheid crime against humanity. As we contemplate what we should do to honor that principled revolutionary and true patriot, Comrade Tito Mboweni, I have no hesitation in saying that we must serve as unwavering activists for the realization of these last two strategic tasks, which Tito considered to be of primary importance. I speak here of the pioneer inclusive national dialogue, which will enable the people to speak freely about the South Africa they want. I also speak of the historic and urgent task to defend the democratic revolution and its leader, the ANC. Comrade Tabombeki, the man who refuses to go out of the headlines and the man who the ANC has grown tired of entertaining. I'm saying this because Tabombeki has for various times taken on the podium, spoke ill of the ANC, spoke un... I don't want to say unscripted because he comes with a script. It might be unscripted for the ANC to manage. Now let's talk about why the family wanted him but the ANC or the presidency didn't want him. I've not seen any, any article coming from the presidency or the ANC that speaks about uh, Tabumbeki's uh, uh, un, uh, inability to speak in the, in the podium. Uh, let me just put it that way because I don't have a better way. So this is my concerns. Number one, let me put it out, clear, out there. I don't blame government for not allowing Tabumbeki to speak because if you were to allow him to speak, a lot of people would then claim the same thing and where would you get the measure? Number two, government of the ANC, a comrade of the ANC. Uh, do I blame Figilem Bolula for not allowing him to speak? No, I don't. And I'll tell you why. Uh, Mbeki, Ramaphosa, Zuma, and Halma Mutland, they equally have a right to request podium and seek audience with the people of South Africa at this time. But they couldn't. Because the funeral, uh, well, if someone would say, yeah, but uh, the family wanted him. Of course, the family wanted him to say. But the final say came from the from government. Government and ANC is debatable. But like I say, I don't blame any of them if that's the stance they took. Mbeki cannot throw his toys and claim and demand to have an audience. In fact, this letter that is here, it's for you to pause and read. I, I, I'm not going to read all of it. I feel, Tabumbek, if you were to go and the family demands of him to speak, a lot of people would, would do the same. Can you imagine if someone dies and they say the family request for 
MK president Jacob Zuma to speak, would they give him the opportunity? I doubt. They, they, the, the choice depends on the government and the ANC because they are uh, jointly running this thing. If, according to me, if the family wanted to pay the last respect, and and I'm sorry if I don't, if I come across as insensitive, if the family wanted to pay the final respect in a way they wanted, maybe they should not have asked for a state funeral. And, okay, asking is, is another way that seems as if I'm saying they requested it. They they didn't get it. They they got a, a state funeral. Whether they asked for it or they were given, it doesn't matter. The choice, the family made a choice to take it. For instance, if the draft that they wanted did not have Mbeki and they thought it's important for him, maybe they could have taken it. The reason they did not, I'm just thinking, the reason they could not take that decision is because I almost used the wrong word for a funeral. Uh, it's not because it's, there's no disaster when Tabumbiki doesn't speak. So it's, it's. I don't want to say inconsequential, but so what if he doesn't speak at the funeral? He can still say what he wants to say about Titumbuweni, about his life, not at the funeral, because not everyone will be accommodated on the on the occasion. I didn't watch the funeral, but people tell me it took the whole day. It took the whole day and so Tabumbeki Look, I'm not happy with Tabumbeki, man. Uh, not only because he feels, but a lot of people who support him. I told you a lot that I am a big fan of Tabumbeki. I used to be a big fan of Tabumbeki. But I just grew up to realize, no man, this man is not helping us with anything. What is it that we are, as South Africans, are benefiting from having Tabumbiki around? Nothing. He's just going to have a lot of speeches, nothing. You know, we have passed, we are 30 years after democracy. The illusion we lived for, it's over. We cannot, and, and, and I'm including myself, I cannot keep loving Tabumbiki just because it's Tabumbiki. He must be doing something. And I've, I've lamented various facts why I don't like him anymore. That man, apologies for that, that man, I mean, Tabumbik is not helping us with anything. Those annual speeches where he attacks the ANC, telling us the things that he could have done. And, uh, you know, I remember when Tabumbik, when Desmond Tutu said he was retiring from public office and we we asked ourselves how, what. Mandela, Mandela spoke about Mandela spoke about uh, I'll get I'll get his word. Don't don't call me, I'll call you when he was retiring from from public um, not public office, pub, from the public. He said he was going to retirement. Tabumbiki must retire. Tabumbiki must retire. He, he, he's he been failing to retire since he was uh, unfailing, and I must state this, unfailing, ejected by the NEC that was controlled by post Bulukwani uh, cabal of, of, of Jacob Zuma. But look, that's the nature of politics. They chose to be politicians, and that's how it bites. It's unfair, we agree, and we agreed with them it was unfair. But it, it beat uh, Zuma again. And this biting of each other, dear Lumana, it's we are the ones who are going to suffer. We are the ones who are suffering from the, un, um, I can't find the best way. And I mean, we are not moving, man, as Africans. Whether he speaks at this or it's not as if he wanted to. If he spoke there at the funeral, he wanted to disclose something very important and urgent for for South Africa, so it could make us even more wiser to go and attack the problem that we had or not. No, with all the information that he had, I listened to Tabumbeki physically. 
a uh, few times. Uh, but on the last time I uh, listened to him, Tabumbi spoke about how xenophobia, sorry, how xenophobia was actually a Zimbabwe inside job because Zimbabweans living in South Africa wanted to cause this thing. It looks like it's bad for Zimbabweans so they can go home and vote, go and vote. Whether I can't remember voting out Mugabe or what, but it was a, and this an intelligence report that exists. The things that in in Alex in 2008, Tabumbi says that report is there. The ANC has not released it, and it's one of the qualms that I have. But well, Tabumbi sits with this information all this time until now. You understand? But it's a classified uh, intelligence report. So I'm saying, if Tabumbi talks to us about issues like this, I can understand. But would people also want to say stuff like this about his administration? Will he defend it? Will he take it in kind? Will it, you understand? So I, 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 I mean, we have listened to that man for a long time. I mean, those long letters of Tabumbeki. Uh, the letters after he resigned, the letters, well, that came a fortnight when he was still the president inside the Umkhabulo. And that man wrote a lot. And I've, maybe it's because now I'm here, I've consumed a lot of material coming from Tabumbeki. Tabumbeki still harbors hatred towards Jacob Zuma. Tabumbeki still thinks people who are leading the ANC are not great and he is great. Tabumbeki still thinks he is not a flip-flopper, a man who told us he will not campaign for the ANC because ANC are thugs and thieves. I said it before elections, but he went to Freedom Park and he was saying, uh, well, I'm going to campaign for the ANC. Predicating. So, Tabumbeki, man, uh, there's nothing. So, you know, you know, it's it's almost so remarkable. It's almost a case of legacy. They they will only tell you about the history, not what they can do now. The ANC has gotten to that age that that they can only tell you about their history, what they used to do, and we appreciate it. Tabumbeki and ANC and Kaiser Chiefs have gotten to that stage where the greatness is their history, not the, what they are doing currently. And it's said, it's said that we have to be subjected to Tabumbeki after all these years, that the man had almost two terms of doing something he, he didn't. You know, there are a lot of things. I mean, Tabumbeki spoke about uh, the illicit financial flows outside, outside Africa. He was still... He, at that time, he was n even not in government. You know, he was deployed to those things. You know, all those peer review mechanisms. All, there is nothing critical, tangible that Tabumbeki has done that has uplifted us. I can tell you about a lot of uh, Tabumbeki failures. Gay, Gipsa, Asgisa. These are microeconomic policies that Tabumbeki uh, pushed down our throats, they did not help. I mean, I was studying uh, engineering when uh, Gipsa and uh, Asgisa were at, at, at the topic, at the highest topics of our uh, media streams. Those things did not bear fruit. I mean, those policies were talking about how uh, the industry can't absorb people because they are not skilled. They do not have qualification for skilling. So those will be like your engineering courses and stuff. So we suffered under under that man. Him, Tabumbeki, Tabumbeki, Trevor Manuel, and uh, Tutumbo when at some point they were called the three TMs. Very brilliant men. Very, very brilliant men. They ran the market. They had the media supporting them all the time. And these guys were called the three TMs. Uh, the other one was a uh, uh, I, I can't remember what Tava Manuel was, but he was into finance, Tabumbeki, an economic uh, master's graduate, uh, Tito Mpoweni, a man with finances. I mean, those guys were darling of the media. Raising lots of, uh, were performing, I mean, the economy was, was, was rising. 
and some say, I'm not sure, I do not verify this, but it's just the narrative that has always been there, that South Africa performed its best, the economy, at that time. But COSATU and SACP were lamenting the fact that this jobless economy is going to crumble one day, and Tabumbeki referred to it as the two economies of South Africa, the economy enjoyed by uh, the rich and the economy enjoyed by the whites. Uh, well, let me repeat, the economy enjoyed by the rich white, economy enjoyed, what not enjoyed, but of the of the uh, lower class. And he called it the two economies, and the media followed it, they called it the two economies. What does Dabon Begu do? He goes out to an NGC, whether it's NGC or policy conference, I can't remember, and they were debating white monopoly capital, the whole entire thing. It was centered around white monopoly capital, whether monopoly capital operating in South Africa is white or black. Tabumbeki wanted to lecture the rest of South Africa and Africa by telling us that monopoly capital does not have color. Like, what hogwash? I mean, this man, he tells us monopoly capital in South Africa does not have color. Who coined all these phrases? Is the ANC uh, dictionaries that were spoon feeding us with these things? of settler, of everything, it is them. Now they're in the cushy jobs, they're eating well. They tell us that uh, these things are, are, are not real. Capital in South Africa is white. Majority of rich people in South Africa are white. When we refer to white monopoly capital. We are not doing it because we just love uh, this political rhetoric. We are doing it because majority of, and if you want to debate me, it's very easy. Just check at your school, house clinic, when kids grow, they always see Africans as general workers who are sweeping, who are cleaning, and who are doing low laying jobs. White people do not do those jobs. I was hosting a guy here who was telling me that Learnerships and apprentices are jobs done by African people because white people won't take that rubbish. It's a sad thing. It's, so this is the legacy of ANC and Bota Bombeki who want to cry foul for not being allowed to speak. It's sad, man. It's very sad. It's very sad that when we speak of such, we are told we are not, uh, we are not patriotic. Patriotism of what? Patriotism of targeting each other and taking each other out. No. Tabumbeki and and some amongst the elites in the ANC must must learn the art of staying away. Staying away. If it was a Titumbo Winis wedding and it wasn't sponsored by the government, the family would insist for him to sit there. So this was a funeral that the state was paying and they needed to manage it the way they needed to. Do you know how many instances we forgave Tabumbeki? We forgave Tabumbeki when he clapped Winnie Mandela. You guys don't understand who Winnie Mandela is. You know sometimes uh, I get I get, uh, I get emotional when I speak about who Winnie Mandela is. And maybe let me take this opportunity to, to, to state it again. So, uh, to me, and in this channel, until someone uh, teaches us better, Harriet Tubman, the lady who championed the Underground Railroad in, in the USA, is number one female, uh, female activist visionary and revolutionary in the history of African people. And second to her is Winnie Mandela. The Winnie Mandela story has not been told enough. The kids know Winnie being beautiful and being brave. They do not tell you the hardship that woman went through, the choices she could have made but she did not make because she was fighting for us. Winnie Mandela is, is the anchor that Nelson Mandela wanted and needed and relied on 
and eventually succeeded when she used uh, her female men need women and women need men and finally to 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 get to mandela to where he is you are going to write on the on the comments line to say yeah what about the limpof so do you want me to what about mandela for you i cannot what about mandela so i am not by no way wanting to compare men and women but i want to tell you if you take the greatness of winnie mandela and you want to scandalize her on bad things you know julius malema got to a tiff one point and he he got to a tiff and he, he almost mentioned people by names but he was respectful because he had at the podium he promised he promised uh, the president who Cyril Ramaphosa that we are going to respect you Julius Malema was so agitated he was speaking about people who betrayed Winnie Mandela with the UDM and UDM held a press conference distancing themselves twigging twigging for white media and 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 capture us of our heroes twigging to them saying they distanced themselves from Winnie Mandela why would you want to distance yourself from Winnie Mandela it's almost like uh Afri Forum says they distanced themselves from from DA of course you are naturally distanced why do you need to twerk? Who told you to go and, and put out that statement? It was bad for that woman. It was very bad. You cannot survive. So one of the few people who actually survived prolonged, timeous, well-resourced media attacks is Julius Malim himself. That man has been attacked by the media from his, from his youth days. When he took over in Mangawa, from Kosas, people did not know him much. It was when he spoke for the first time. He said he was ready to die for Mandela, for 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 Zuma. When people started and they started to scandalize that man, he is. I mean, uh, Julius Malema. You see, that's that's the greatness we see of Julius Malema because the reason they attacked him is because Julius Malema unearthed a certain thing in African youth to say don't be afraid to stand up for yourself and the controllers of this government doesn't like that they don't like that I've said it many times on this podcast Jacob Zuma chased Julius Malema Jacob Zuma and Sarah Lamaposa chased uh, Malema out of the ANC and killed the possibilities of uh, youth league growing further but let me be long let me not be long uh, the grab i have with, with with that man thank you very much machine political incorrect